Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. In a previous video, I showed you how to set up a Ubiquity Edge Router PLE. It was the first time I had ever tried to use these routers and my firmware was so old, it was back from 2013, even though it was a new router, that I had to go through a bunny hop um, three-step upgrade to get it to the current version, which introduced some better traffic statistics and also some wizards to help configuration. So that's all done. Now it's time to configure my two Wi-Fi access points. So um, the software that I have here, which was from the router, does not talk to the access points. I wanted to have more ports available without going crazy. So the Unify Edge router, the uh, I guess they call it a USG, uh, security gateway would be handled by the same software as the Wi-Fi routers but I don't I didn't get one of those so anyway I need to make sure that I'm on the same subnet as the uh, the two Wi-Fi access points uh, so I've plugged my router into the local 2 port so I now have a 192.168.1. something IP address so the software I need to run is called Unify controller and I've already installed it. You can download it for free from Ubiquity. I'll provide all the links um, when I post this and it runs as a service in the background on your PC collecting stats and all sorts of wonderful things. You can run it on all sorts of different devices including Linux and uh, Mac OS X and things. Um, once you've installed it and you've clicked on to run you get this screen up and you launch a web browser which is the main user interface for this. So we'll do that now and it will come up with a new interface. Um, so you can see here it shows us all of the unified type devices. Now as I say I didn't get the gateway that it wants to have here. Um, that's okay but and I don't have any switches because I have an unmanaged gigabit 16 port switch already. Uh, what I do have are access points, and right now we can't see any. Uh, if I click though and go in, you can see here we have two access points that it's found on the network. So um, these are the device names, they're not very friendly right now. And they've both been assigned IP addresses and they're waiting for what um, Ubiquity calls adoption. So we need to adopt these and configure them. So what we're going to do on one of them, um, I've already, already been playing with one of them and its firmware was updated. You can see it's at 3.9.54. The other one is not yet at the latest firmware. So I think the first thing I'll do is upgrade the firmware before we do anything else. Saves having to have any mess. So we'll just click upgrade um, and it's asking me do, you want, do I want to take it up to the latest firmware. We just say confirm and we'll let that do its upgrade. I'll um, come back once it's finished doing its update and rebooted. Uh, while we're waiting for that one to actually to do the update, let's just start adopting this second one here. We'll just click on adopt and it'll go through a provisioning exercise. We don't have any configurations set up yet, um, but we will start the adoption. Once this other one's finished updating, we'll adopt it as well. What that effectively does is it brings it sort of into the fold, makes it yours. Um, and if you were running a full unified set of devices, they would all be configured as being part of the same network. So you can see the first one there has now been adopted and it says connected, which is good. Um, it has this locate button, which when you click it will actually flash the light on the top of the unit. Uh, so I can see one in the distance there flashing away blue, which is great. Guess I'll turn that off. Uh, next one is still doing its update, so we'll just give that a little bit longer. Okay, that's finished doing the update now. Uh, pending adoption. It's probably doing a reboot right now because it's still got the old version there. Okay, both now at 3.9.54.9373. Excellent. So you got addresses, they're partly configured. What we need to do now is configure them. I think there's a way you can do them both together by going into settings and go wireless network, create a new wireless network. 
So we'll call it, um, in my case, Oaks Clan Home, because that's what a lot of my things are already configured for. Put in your security key. I'm not going to do guest portal yet. That's a whole different conversation. And anything in here, advanced options, no VLANs, nope, enable fast roaming, nope, prevent SID from being broadcast, nope, WAPAT only, enable da -da -da -da. user group default for now. Um, all right, that looks good to me. So we'll save that. And I think that should push itself. Yeah, you can see here now it shows the devices being provisioned. So it's actually uploading that Wi Fi configuration to both those Wi Fi access points simultaneously, which is nice. And now it's done. So if I go into the radios now, I think I should probably see not the radio, maybe the overview. Oh, there we go, wireless LANs. <laughs> Just got to find the right button. As I said, all new to me. So here's the wireless LAN for the 2.4 gig um, and the 5 gig. And they're using the same name um, and everything else. So that's cool. And they're both configured. So if I look on my um, Wi-Fi list now, I should see the connection, Oaks Clan Home, right there which is good. Now, because I've set that up, I should start seeing a whole bunch of um, devices now connecting. So, if I go to... Looks like my phone has automatically connected, which is good. Uh, I think this is my Raspberry Pi is now connected, which is good. I haven't set up any um, static leases or anything yet so I need to do that I saved them all to a word document for configuring them later um, I just want to see these picking up DHCPs at the moment which they should do quite happily so insight shows you all the other networks wireless networks that can be found in the area it looks like I'm even getting ones for the city which is uh, interesting quite a few you can get details about them tells you what manufacturer um, it is if it knows the um, Apple one here is my other router that's at the back of the house it's still connected or it's still working anyway whether it's picked up at a new IP address for itself I don't know um, clients still just got the two and with this one, you also, this software, you also get a certain level of uh, traffic analysis and things as well. Uh, as you can see here, access point retry rates, um, Wi Fi metrics. So it's showing me the 2.4 gigahertz devices all starting to connect here with SID uh, Oaks Clan Home, which is what I configured. And they're all busy connecting by the look. So I'm not sure why they weren't showing up on my list of. Nope, still just shows that... Oh, these are five... <laughs> okay, fair enough. Me being dumb. I'm looking at five gig here. Um, just click on all. There we go. Now it's showing all the different devices connecting. And it gives us their activity, which is not a lot. Um, their up and down link speeds. Uh, sorry, up and down link activity. Uh, you can block them. So if you see one that gets connected and you don't like it, you can just click in here and block it um, all their MAC addresses and things like that now one of the last things I want to do here is I want to change this from this ugly name here I'm going to call it AP1 and AP2 or um, front and rear or something like that so you can go in I've clicked on the first one um, you can go in here to config and you can give it an alias so we'll call this um, well, the first one's going to go in the sewing room, so let's just call it sewing room. And we'll save that. And you can see there it's already set up. We're saying sewing room. And the next one we'll call 
family room because that's where I'm going to put that one. So we go to config and sorry, that's clients that are connected. And we'll say family room and click save. So there we go. And what I will do is probably um, put a label on them because they're both right now down in the basement with me in the lab while I'm configuring these and I have to go plug them out in the wilds. Um, one of the other nice things for each of these two is you can actually see the clients that are connected. So you can see here we've got, uh, they're very close together so I'm not surprised they're spreading around but one, two, three, four of them connected here and way more than four connected on this other one. Octoprint server yeah the other one i think has my phone if you i don't know if i can click it and get oh there you go i can get specific details on my phone so it knows what brand it is um, what ip address how long it's been connected um, connected to what access point um, statistics so signal strength, transmit receive rate, this is a 5 gig. Power save not enabled. Um, you can do deep packet inspection on a lot of things as well. Uh, I haven't enabled it, I'm not going to for now. And uh, yeah, so lots of cool stats and everything else. Um, that looks like I have now everything configured, I've just got to basically put them up in and around the house so that's the next step I'm going to do I won't bother putting that in the video it's just putting two screws in the wall and mounting them pretty much so um, yeah it was actually for the Wi-Fi very very easy to get them configured and up and running um, the router I guess would have been easy if the firmware was up at the current version when I got it it wasn't so it caused me a lot of grief uh, initially because the firmware I was looking at didn't match the user guide and then once I did the upgrade you know things became much much simpler so um, yeah that is now got my home running with the new router uh, I guess the last thing to do here is maybe a uh, Wi-Fi speed test uh, if I can I'm going to do this on my phone um, because it is connected um, we should probably see that show up as activity as well if I look at the um, no, let's go to the dashboard that might not be the best place let's have a look clients here here we go um, so right now the activity up and down has been pretty quiet so I'm showing all of the clients Let's uh, bring up the Wi-Fi man, which is also free to download from Ubiquity, and it has a speed test built in. So I'm connected to the Wi-Fi Oaks client home, and if I just click the start, I think previously when I was on the old Wi-Fi from the old router, I was get I've got a written down here. I was getting 19 meg down and 90 megabits that is and 10 up so that's not too bad so I'm going to run this now and we'll see what I get so it's sitting at 59.6 megabits down that's three times as fast coming down and up is going to be uh, for whatever reason that's still rather crawling at the moment I should be able to get about 10 but it's sitting at oh it's creeping up 5, 6 6, 7, 8, 9, 8 yeah I'm getting 7 up so that's not too bad but my download is now significantly better than it was uh, it might also be the time of day um, but that's good so I think uh, Wi-Fi is now working I've got rid of the four Wi-Fi networks I used to have in the house and now have only one SID broadcasting automatic moving between 5 gig 2.4 gig and either of the two access points that should all be completely transparent to me 
uh, and anybody else. I can set up a guest network for when the kids have friends over and things like that. Um, now all I've got to do is a bunch of D standard DHCP static lease configurations from my old uh, hardware to get them on the right IP addresses so that I don't have to keep figuring out where they are. And I'll be done. But for the sake of this video and keeping it relatively short, um, I'm going to wrap it up here and uh, call it a day. So um, if that was too technical, apologies, but it, it is a technical subject and I wanted to see you uh, I wanted to have you see how bad this was, warts and all. So I think I've successfully done that. I think overall, though, the Ubiquiti uh, equipment is extremely good. It's sort of in the um, lower end, uh, performance-wise, commercial band of equipment, whereas what I was using before, at the time I bought it, was in the higher end of domestic band. But there is no, you know, you're not getting anything that physically looks pretty. I mean, the Wi-Fi access points do look quite acceptable. I'll put a picture up on the screen for you to have a look at. Uh, and they'll fit in with any, pretty much any decor, like little white dome things. Um, but the, the router is just a, you know, black box with some lights on it for each of the ports to indicate things. Uh, biggest thing I'm going to have to watch going forward is not plugging in something that doesn't use PoE into the port with PoE because it's not automatic PoE. It's you turn it on and it stays on. Um, so I think a few labels will probably be in order for that. Um, oh, the other thing I just noticed here while we were doing it, my phone, now you can see here the activity down um, reg registers that speed check that I just did. It suddenly bumped up to 159 megs and 17 and a half up um, yeah so that's pretty good if I just go back now to the dashboard I should be able to I don't know if I can get rid of these because I should be able to do like speed checks and things like that if I have it uh, if I know what my internet capacity is so yeah, uh, some of the other fancy features I'll do in another video. I'm not going to waste your time now while I try and figure out everything else that these routers and the access points can do. Um, so yeah, let's call it quits. If you like it, thumbs up. If you don't, well, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.